on, to, on to another warm one. Yeah, 2006. How did Juice. you feel about the 06s when oh, they were released, Chaz? Uh, you know, I loved them. Yeah. So I didn't know, I didn't know, I, I, all, all I knew was 2005 and 2004. Um, nice. Backhand. Um, and 2006 was a complete shift of gears, right? Like these were just juicy and fruity and so easy to drink right off the bat. Um, I bought a lot of them and I was really depressed because about three <laughs> years later, um, they, some of them fell off a cliff and uh, you, learn, you learn lessons. Just like the, just like in life and collecting wine, um, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see see how this one uh, fared. Have, have you had any 2006s uh, recently from anybody that you felt really good about or been really excited about lately? I can't remember the particular vintage as far as opening it recently. Sure. So, uh, uh, but but I know that we around here tend to pull out wines. I know Toby does quite a bit, and, and Bill is. That you know, we don't believe in this five to ten year. I mean, I won't even look at the wine if it's got, if it has less than five years. A Pinot Noir, I right. don't care what it is. Five years is minimum. Ten years is probably okay. Nice. But mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of times we'll we'll drink twenty year old wines and they they get a whole different characteristic. So, but I can't remember too much about the 06 as far as specifically. It's too young. Sure, fair enough. <laughs> what? John Paul Cameron. Cameron. Cameron's 06s are phenomenal. So, yeah, all right. I, I think we're corked here. We're definitely yeah. corked here. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> oh, you're right. That, that no, is exactly. a little corky. That's a shame. We tested them all a little but when, when we opened them and didn't notice it, but it, I guess it just needed a little time to poke its head up. At least we caught it before we got too far into it. Ooh. So, you pick it up? Doesn't taste great. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Take a quick cut. We'll be, uh, we'll be right yep. back. All right. We are back with more 2006. Our friend Heidi just ran back and pulled one from the cellar, poured some more into our glasses. We're back in action. Mm. Yeah. So mm. the wine's a little quite cold, a bit hasn't been opened quite as long, but isn't corked. So, uh, <laughs> Which means we can talk about yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's That's smelling cool. great, actually. It's really, it really it's smelling is. great. Yeah. Actually, the chill on it is sort of nice. It sort of reminds me of sitting on the deck and eating some cheese in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> I like the little bit cooler. Temperatures on I feel like there's a there's a little more spice coming out on the nose here too. I'm getting like mm -hmm. a little, definitely. little nutmeg, a little cinnamon, mm -hmm. kind of a mixed in with that fruit. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, not so much dundee fruit. Not so much mold and mildew. Right, no. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a friend Carl who uh, uh, chills all of his Pinot Noirs ahead of time. He always I throws them in the fridge oh. 30 minutes ahead of time because he's like they'll never be cold again once you've got them out on the table and they're drinking them. So it's good to. Just see them cold, and then as they warm up. Is that Carl and Sherwood or Carl and Beirut? Carl and Beirut. All right. So I thought it was an interesting thing. I don't do it, but yeah, if it's room temp, good. I'll bring it down. Yeah, good. Yeah. Thank you, Heidi, for doing that. Yeah, that great. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, it's, go ahead. Yeah, fruit flavors right on contact. Cherries. Edging a little bit bright towards cherry, uh, to, towards candy, yeah, yeah, like bright candy cherries, yeah. um, real fresh, and then a little bit of that structure coming in on the mid palate. It's almost like those cherry cough drops without the menthol, right? Like yeah. very, very focused cherry flavor, like almost yeah, a little candy. Not to suggest none of that medicinal yeah. stuff's coming in. And yeah, none of the medicinal yeah. parts of it, yeah. but it's just like so, so just cherry. Mm -hmm. And, and Veronique, Veronique in her notes points out that the finish is very long. And uh, I, I tend to agree. It's got a little bit of the Dundee spice, and the, mm -hmm. the finish is pretty long on this one. Mm -hmm. Really full, bright strawberry flavors again, kind of like the, the hood strawberries even. Yeah. And, and you can tell that this is a younger wine, definitely. The structure is more full, sets in on the mid-palate, and stays pretty strong all the way through the back. Both, agree. both tannins and acidity. Um, but I don't mind so much. It's young. It just makes me excited to hold on to this until... 2026 or whatever, right? Yeah. So doing so, it's doing pretty well for a 2006. I mean, it's doing it's very good. I, I've had a lot of 2006s, like I was saying earlier. Like you know, I felt really depressed after I ended up with a lot of these wines because they just sort of uh, became peaks and valleys, right? Like they were uh, no mid palate and all acid, or you know, uh, and and this wine is not that. Or they taste so. 30 years old after three. <laughs> that that also yeah. happened. Yeah. yeah, it's really unfortunate. So, but this one is is uh, holding on really well. Um, Surprised to say, well, I mean, this is a little cold too. I wonder what this would taste like if it was fully warm. 
Yeah. Honestly, and and like thirty minutes of air. I think the structure would probably come out a little bit. Yeah. I think it, everything would become a little bigger, probably. Right. Huh? In this in this circumstance, like totally like an 88, 89 point wine. It, it, it's it's nice. It's complex. It's, uh, it smells wonderful. It, anyway, ninety for me. Just just edging in there. I think um, I'm like it. It gives me a little bit of something to think about. I think it's showing well right now. Right. Yeah. On to uh, what the internet considers the shitty vintage. I mean, right. Delete that if you want to. No, but, that's all right. Um, so 2007 got a lot of press uh, as being a terrible vintage. Uh, thankfully, the wines were actually quite good, and uh, they rewarded people who held them in the cellar. I, mean, I think a Portugal yeah. was small. That's so. fine. Yeah, we'll put yeah. it to good use. Yeah. So I had a lot of good experiences with 2007s lately. So. Do you have any memories of 2007? Do you, do you go do you go to the release events or do you uh, do you pick the wines up later or have them shipped to you or something? No, I usually just get them locally, you know, sure. because we're we live here in Oregon. Sure, and didn't have enough connections. And Heidi got some for us, and basically, uh, no, we just pick them up every year because they're they're very, you know, they're very trustworthy. I mean, yeah. you know, you can't go wrong picking this stuff up. And I found that uh, I I don't. I, I, I don't like their wines on release all the time. Like I think I feel like it's kind of hit and miss um, right away. But I've had some of my best aged Oregon Pinot Noir experiences from their wines, and I don't know if I've had a bad one that's had ten plus years on it. Like I've really really enjoyed their aged wines, and it, it kind of drove me to think like same thing. Like pretty reliable. It's something I need to start collecting so I can right. have those aged wine experiences and really enjoy them. Well, just like here, like these notes you said are, are wine spectators for the vintage. There we go. 84 points. Yeah. 84 points. So it goes from 92 in 2006 to 84 in 2007. Yeah, and then it was back quite to 97. A deal. How did you and feel about 2007 when it when it came out? Were you nervous about the wines from that vintage, or did you feel like they'd come around in time? I wasn't nervous about the vintage. It All right. Every year is, you know, another year. Yeah, they move past, the years move by real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Bill? Um,. I tend to buy uh, producers rather than years, yeah. and so um, the fellows whose wines I continue to buy year in and year out, I, I own them. Right. The Cameron, you know, Domaine Druin, and uh, the Evesham Woods. Sure. And if you, uh, I think the biggest change in, in Oregon Pinots over the last 20, 25 years, and coming to this vintage, is that the winemakers have now used, been uh, working with these grapes. We're now 10, 15, 20 years. And they, un they understand how to handle the off vintages, the, the, the good years and the bad right. years. I think this is a, a, a wine where a fine winemaker understands her grapes and was able to craft a good wine because she understands her vineyard and her grapes. Other fellows, uh, people, excuse me, uh, yeah. uh, may, may, not, may not have that luxury because they're coming right. new, into the, new into the business here and they don't, they don't have history with the vineyards. I think this is a good example of a, of, a, of a tough vintage that a fine winemaker knows her grapes and her vineyards and make fine wine. I think that's the, the key to this. Excellent. Well, a friend of, uh, I know we've quoted this on the show a million times, right, but a friend of Veronique's, Isabelle Dutart, who <laughs> works at DuPont, right. um, had a great quote for us uh, one time when we were doing a show with her and we said something about, what do you think of 2007 uh, getting such bad reviews in the press? And she said, oh, if they... They don't like 2007. They don't know Pinot Noir. They don't know anything about Pinot Noir. They don't know anything about Pinot Noir. It's yeah. like, it's, so. it, it really... Sh the, it, after, shows in the, it shows in this bottle. It yeah. shows in the, yeah. It shows in the wines now. I was initially a hater when I first started drinking 2007s. I came from 2006. All I experienced was 05 and 06 at that point. I was like, these are terrible to drink <laughs> on release. What is wrong with these wines? Like, Pinot Noir is not supposed to be like this. Well, I learned. But even still, and thanks... Thanks to Wine Spectator putting 84 points on stuff like this. <laughs> it's you affordable. Get, uh, yeah, yeah. You can still find some of this stuff for great prices online. Yeah, yeah it's the, the 07 is a, yeah, it was a, it was a poor year, but I don't know. It tastes pretty damn good to me. Yeah, these have come around substantially. Like this is, but many are weak. I don't <laughs> see anything weak about this uh, wine. The nose is the most floral of any we've, we've opened so far, I Agreed. think. Agreed. Um, I'm really, really enjoying that. And, and in kind of a friendly way, like this does have this uh, this like delicate sensibility to it, right? You know, right out of the glass. That that's really engaging. Yeah. Definitely more delicate nose. I would totally agree on the floral aspect. Now that you pointed that out, it's like all like flowers and roses. 
It smells wonderful. Yeah. Bright cherries, full acidity on the palate. Uh, the tans, I think, are lighter than in the previous one. Um, there's still an element of structure to it. There's still some strength there that makes me look forward to its future. Um, being a more delicate wine, I, I, I would definitely uh, discourage drinking this with, you know, with some big heavy food, or if you're doing it with a bunch of other wines, I'd say, you know, get to this a little earlier, get a chance to appreciate that nuance. I guess I just don't find this delicate at all. Oh, I mean, all right. Structur structurally, I think it's all there, and I think it's got great acid to keep up like this fruit, and the fruit has a nice intensity. Um, it's definitely not not the least delicate of all the wines we tasted today, in my opinion. All right. So, um, this one I like quite a bit. Like uh, it's it's a little more balanced than some of the other wines we've just tasted. Um, I like the like the fruit all and uh, I don't know. This is probably the nice. Yeah, I think the yeah. challenge to yeah. a lot of people that collect Lorraine or or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like Bill and others, it, it, it's really more of a thing of. They all are costing you about the same amount of money. And, mm -hmm. and basically, they don't vary much in price. And so you need to pick the right occasion for the different vintage. Right. And I, I think the 07 is just one of those ones you show up at an informal party and it's great. Yeah. People love it. And I think it's a, it's a good chance to make that impression that people... I, I run into some people who think that that Oregon Pinot Noir, or more commonly American Pinot Noir in general, is too heavy, and this is a great example of one that's got, you know, that light character that's well integrated. Even even though it is a little younger, I think the integration is kind of there. Totally. Right now. Yeah. yeah. It's, I think it's I think it's a fine wine. Can yeah. open some people. Is this why I interject? They must be drinking too much California Pinot. I, I, yeah. I, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. Napa. Yeah, I told I told Toby that you know there's a place that we call uh, Adrian Fogg down in California, and they sell a Pinot Noir. That's called the monster, and, <laughs> that's and, and that sums it up. Yeah. I mean, it, wow. it makes your teeth more purple than a Syrah from Washington. Right, it's so a it's big on. ass Pinot Noir. Uh, this I am expecting will not be light and delicate. Uh, Probably not. I don't think it will be a monster either. This is the uh, 08. The 2008. Uh, very also, very high rating. Also excited to try it. I haven't had uh, I haven't had this for quite a while. A lot of the eights I got, uh, I've just been sitting on. Agreed. Just went to that uh, big uh, post IPNC wine berserkers tasting for the 2008s. Um, a lot of great wines, but um, all all too young, right? Like, I mean, well, what do you expect for 2008, right? I think I think these wines will probably survive a very long time. I was there and I expected more. Yeah, mm -hmm. sitting here, I was. I, you know, I was there. They and were I all expected... sort of baseline. Yeah, yeah like, exactly um, right. One thing that. I, I, I enjoyed the 2004 tasting a little did less. You, did you? Uh, However, there were wines that were like you had 90% um, of them fit into one area, and then like 10% of them were well above, right. or, or like one or two well below. Um, the 2008s were all right in the same wheelhouse. Yeah, which was just kind all of kind of monotone, if that's the right term in wine. Agreed, <laughs> agreed. Yep. I mean, but they were all of very high quality. Yeah, they were, you know, yeah. well crafted, yeah. but some, you know, just, I was, I wasn't as dazzled as I thought it was going as to be. be. I totally agree. From yeah. what, from what we read here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think from what, there was a ton of hype going into yeah. it. I think a lot of press loves to be first, right? So you make yeah. really dramatic proclamations about the vintage as soon as you possibly can. Right. People rushed to it about 08. A lot of people had the fruit they wanted to, they wanted to grow. They, they were able to get the ripeness they wanted. Uh, a lot of people made, you know, just some kind of full structure wines, and I'm waiting. I'm kind of waiting to see how they turn out. This one smells great on the glass. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, a lot of those like earthy, a little bit of meaty aromas coming out of it, a little bit of dark fruits, uh, but it's still pretty engaging. It doesn't smell too heavy to me. I don't think. Yeah, a little Ver bit of the oaks coming out. Veronique yeah. thought that this one should uh, have a little decanter, but the the thing that strikes me about this is the 07 was rated an 84 as a vintage. 08 was rated at 97. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this really, I mean, this goes to the winemaker skill. This is really not that much different there. than the last one. Absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, the last one was good. This one may be a tiny bit better, but, you know, you can still extract a great amount of skill out of that. She's done well with producing a good product, despite what the vintage. Showed. Well, and I think that's but the still showing the vintage. That's the opportunity of doing a big vertical like this from yeah. one producer is the it's fact fantastic. that you can. The only variable in this, it isn't the vineyard, it's only the weather, and the winemaker. That's it. 
Yeah. And, you know, it, it goes with the skill. As Bill mentioned, they, they finally get a handle on what kind of fruit, in what kind of season, the ripening aspects and stuff like that. It's amazing how well they can do it. And it's great to have that big lot of barrels to choose from when you're making a barrel selection, too, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. I think if your vintage vari if you were picking the bottom ten percent, your vintage variation would be a lot greater, right? Right. It's really closed. I would agree, it's honestly. It's pretty close. I think it, I think it's because yeah. it's newer. Oh, I, I, I think we're. I think but we're, it's pretty close. Right. I think it's it's hard to find what you're looking for. If you know, if you if yeah. you have something you're looking for in Veronique's wines, it's hard to find it. Yeah, it's, it's like we have some tucked away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I get like a. Oh, go ahead. I'm just struggling to find fruit in it. I mean, the fruit is yeah. there, mm -hmm. um, but it's sort of muddled, and it's like I can sort of pick out the oak over the top of it, um, at, that, at least in the nose. I'm getting a little bit of blackberry fruit that I, I think has a good sense of purity to it. I think the blackberry fruit lingers in the center of the palate long and pretty well, uh, but the tannins are still full around and underneath it, and, and there is the subdued sense of the fruit that, that, yeah. that just makes me want to sit on it some more. Well, I think that was the, the, the entire... Most. We had what forty wines at the IPNC at the mm -hmm. Berserkers mm -hmm. tasting, and right. I think that was the the general consensus. It's they're all kind of muddled. You know? Yeah, but it was just the general consensus of ninety eight. Oh wait, oh yes, oh wait, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and with some producers, honestly, I I, I would be worried. Like, is it going to come around? Is it going to come through? I've had such great experiences with these wines aging. I'm not worried about that even a little bit. Um, not correct. Really. But uh, but you know, but I, I know I do have some of these, and and I'm not going to open it anytime soon. Agreed. I, I wouldn't. Oh, I actually. I think I own one bottle of this. I wouldn't open anytime soon. Yeah. So eighty-eight points for me now, but yeah, with the definite yeah. upside, but yeah, uh, it's gonna it's gonna get a little bit tighter here as we move on. Yeah. So thanks for right. thanks to Heidi and David for sharing these babies with us. It's it's still nice to get a chance to check in on them. Oops. Two thousand nine. Baby killing, as they say. A little bit lighter color, I think. Yeah, definitely lighter than the eight. So I remember loving this wine on release. I, I bought a few extras. I gave some away as gifts because I thought people would particularly like them. Um, heard heard good replies from from the people I gifted them to. Uh, oh, haven't had one for over a year at least, so I'm excited to see how it's doing now. This is the first one I've had. Nine. Nine was a tricky vintage, I think, to collect. Like, I I, I take in the stuff from the producers that I like, right, um, and. They're like a combination of ripeness, but then firm structure and kind of. So you like, do I hold them and let the structure try to settle a little bit, or and let that ripeness <laughs> do whatever it's question. going to do, yeah. Yeah, or do you get burned like 06 again? <laughs> I, the hope is you don't, right? Yeah. But I'm still sitting on a bunch of 09 because who knows what's going to happen. So mm. it smells pretty good though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But definitely a darker characteristic of the nose, right? Like there's a little, a little darker fruit, darker cherries. Yeah, a little Maybe bit, a bit of blackberry. Yeah, blackberry. A little bit of that blackberry bramble, right? A little mm -hmm. dried out, dried out bramble in there. Yeah, drier. Yeah. I get a little bit more lighter fruits. This is, you know, because a lot of times they'll they'll characterize dark fruit, red fruit, you know, and you sort of. It's sort of a middle in between, sort of a sharing over type of thing. Agreed. But this one, I mean, and Ken Wright's a good example of that. Some of his vineyards he does is all bright cherries and stuff like that, and the other ones are all really dark plums, and definitely, plums mm -hmm. and stuff. But uh, this one, I think maybe because of its youth, is showing a little bit more cherry raspberry to me, mm -hmm. you know, light fruit type of stuff. Or maybe just because it's not very old. It's drinking yeah. quite nice. Enjoyable, yeah. Very enjoyable. I think the fruit really lifts the rest of the wine over the top of like any sort of heat on the finish. The finish, the, you can definitely sense the heat, the heat on the finish. Like there's a little bit of alcohol, but structurally, it's in a nice place. The fruit is really forward and really exuberant and really, I don't know, it's pleasant. It could be a little edgy for some. It's definitely borderline for me. But. Yeah, the fruit's definitely, I think, jump, jumping out onto my palate. Both, both. Front and mid palate are really great, and I think the fruit's got a good sense of richness to it, too. Good complexity, really engaging. It falls off a little bit on the back end. I'm Agreed. with you. There's a little bit of that, maybe a touch of heat, maybe a touch of tannins coming up. It doesn't totally blow everything out of the water, but, uh, you know, 
I think I find myself hoping the fruit would run out a little more. And we'll see how that goes over time. But I, yeah. I really, it, it's still, I think, a pretty enjoyable drink right now. Um, Agreed. Of the lineup, you know, one of, one of my, you know, if you're pouring me glasses right today, one of my favorites. So if you're going to say like 03, 06, 09, the hot vintages, this would be Nine, your favorite? Any day. Okay. And, and that's, I think that really ties into the experience uh, that, that, Bill was, that Bill was mentioning, that a lot of producers, I think, really had a better feel for how to work with these hot vintages. Um, yeah. And that when 09 came around, they kind of knew what to do with the crop loads, when to pick, how to treat the grapes in the cellar. And I think that's really come through, I think, across a lot of producers. I've enjoyed 09 more than the other two. Thanks. Great. All right, last one nice in the lineup. So this is the 2010. I think when I looked at Cellar Tracker, like this was the highest scored wine of all of these 11 wines. At perhaps the ve best vintage for Oregon Pinot Noir. Yeah, and I would, I would never have said that on release, but I... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Get a little... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, a little yeah, more. Yeah, Why not? You know. Perfect. All right. There you go. So, um, but, but as I have continued to enjoy and love Oregon Pinot Noir, um, 2010 is near and dear to my heart. So it's a great vintage, in my yeah. opinion, if, if not the best. Was this the year of the birds? I think it was. This, yeah, this was, was a tough year, year yeah. for a lot of people as far as yields. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it was cold and, and, and birds. A lot of press got on the bandwagon right away talking about how mm -hmm. crappy this one was going to be, too. Oh, but it's in 94. But they, but they backed off of it after the fruit started to come in. Um, yep. And, uh, and, boy, I've been loving 2010s. I think since Great. release, even still, I pop them open. I'm so excited to drink them. Find them on, on shelves or on wow, sale some places good. now. It's well, the birds only ate the bad grapes. Anyway. Right, yeah, it's perfect. So only they could have <laughs> pre sort, pre sort, pre sort. Yeah, yeah. Pre -sorting. yeah. If they could carry them over, de stem them, and carry them over to the other thing, it would have been great. Great complexity on the nose, mm -hmm. floral elements, fruit, a little bit of that grapefruit with a little, little bit of the grapefruit peel in there for Agreed. zest. Definitely younger than all than some of the early ones we had. Mm hmm. Which is a good idea that we went from oldest to youngest. I agree. Agree. Because this would have. <coughs> Although sure. it would this have been, one is it marginally. It would have been fun to have this open first, so we <coughs> come back to it an hour right. later and see how it's doing. We'll, we'll just do we'll, the whole thing. We'll do again. later. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll turn the, the camera off. We got them all out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll do the whole thing all over again. Uh, I'm sure. So. Mm. Oh Love gosh. and yeah. yeah. This smells wonderful. So. So this is uh, five years old now, and they wow. just released it a couple of years ago. Really yeah, it's smoking. <laughs> it's young, yeah. but it's really good. Yeah. And, and great complexity already too. It, it, it's vivacious. There's a lot of energy to it. I think kind of the things you expect from a young wine, right? There's there's not that maturity and, and really full integration of things. Uh, but there's so much to be excited about here. A lot of the flavors I talked about on the nose are coming through on the palate. The structure's in a great spot to support all that fruit. A little bit of spice. Really exciting. This is a good example. When you go into restaurants and the, you look down the wine list, I mean, Lorraine's pretty expensive, but if you look down the wine list and there's a lot of younger wines, this is a good example of that and the fact that it's younger. It can go with food okay, totally. but, you know, you really do need some age on these wines. Agreed. To really complement how it's put together, so like the, the balance and the intensity and the structure is all there. And I think in like ten years, this is going to be an extraordinary wine. I would like love just, to hear your your guys' experience on that. Oh yeah. You've had a longer. So part of my big fears. I'm loving the 2010s so much right now. I'm afraid that they're going to shut down. I'm going to regret not drinking everything within the next two years. You feel like this has a great future in front of it. I think it has a great future in front of it, and, and you know, to to quote a guy, Jacques Lardier, that he talked to me one time. He was there with uh, David Lett, and I remember the conversation specifically because we were at lunch, and he was talking about how these Pinot Noirs. He said, you know, they just they sort of close up. They open up and they show you something, and then they close up and they wait a couple of years, and then it's like a flower. It reopens again for a few years, and then it can shut down again. And it's all in that, uh, you know, the uh, organic chemistry of it and how it develops over time. And so I think this thing is probably going to shut down for a year or two and then reopen again. That will be a great wine over time. Cool. We caught it at an open moment. This is drinking this is quite well beautiful. now. This, this is, is just this delicious. Is yeah. 
Uh, I totally agree. This is this is up there with my favorite of the lineup. So far. that reminds me of the old one. Hmm. I can see I, that, which yeah. I liked. I liked yeah. the old one very much. Kind of reminds me of the old one. It's, it's deja thing. vu all over again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Shout out to Yogi Berra. Cheers. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I guess as, as we start to wrap up here, I, I'm really curious of this entire lineup. Uh, which which of these yeah which of the, which, which of these wines were you most excited to get into before we tasted any of them? Oh five for All me, right. just basically because oh, it was a yeah it, it was I have a lot of expectations for it and we have a bit of it and I just wanted to make sure it was okay so Good. it was a great opportunity. All right. To me, I think the the surprise was how wonderful the 07 was. You know, I mean, Agreed. Just, just just from you know, the press Agreed. and everything else, and I've had. Strong bottles and weak bottles and good bottles. And this, totally. This is, a, a, yeah. this is a wonderful bottle of wine. Yeah, right. and, the, and also the aspect of tasting the OO and the 01 and realizing you still got years to go. Oh, years yeah. to go. Not, no question. No question about it. Heidi? <laughs> Everybody keeps I, trying to I say a few things. I think I put things. on the spot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was just fantastic. Everything tasted well. Even the hot years were way better than I thought they would be and right. so it, it goes to Bill's comment about you know picking producers versus picking vintages so yeah it was it was really cool to do this well thank awesome. you so much yeah, to all you, three of you all for making you. this possible thanks to all of you for uh, keeping interest in the show I hope you enjoy unique content like this we hope to bring you lots more and uh, question of the day to you what oh, would yeah, you like to ask the audience they can respond in comments. Well, that's right. You asked that question yeah. every damn time. We do. I just hope Veronique agrees with us. Yeah. Fantastic. There we go. <laughs> Maybe she'll comment on Facebook. She will. That'd be great. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Cheers.